Hello, I was posting this video because a few of you were noting that you were having some problems getting dynamic content from adap adaptive cards. So I do want to show you a workaround in case you run into that. Uh, for some reason, it's inconsistent. Some of you are running into it and some of you aren't, which means it could be some difference in your version uh, number, like what version you're running, what what is the last wave that hit you so i just want to make sure you have a workaround while we in the back end are trying to figure out what happened and how quickly we can resolve it so that nobody runs into this problem so just to clarify the problem um when you create an action well actually i see that there may be more than one problem so first of all when you add a card weight action, you should not see this blue button here unless you have turned on experimental features. Now it is possible that if you, if you turn this on before, that there may be some caching involved. So what I'll do is I will turn it off and then I will control refresh to make sure that a cache is cleared and then um, I'll try and open it now in this case I'm not sure why it's insisting on giving me that blue button and this is probably one of those other things that some of you may be experiencing and I'm again trying to get this worked out so that it's very consistent when you have the um, experimental features turned on you'll see the blue button if you have it turned off you won't okay um, my situation right here could be because I did something a while ago that's stuck here and it's, 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 it shouldn't happen to you, but so you should not see the blue button. If you're not in experimental mode, you should s see it if you are, but that is not the problem I'm even talking about today. The problem I'm talking about today is whether or not you get dynamic content. So I'm going to click here and just put a compose to show you what I mean. I don't want a lot of you to find this problem and not know what to do. So this is a, this is a video to help you work around whatever you encounter. Um, so I'm in the compose action right here and you'll notice the dynamic content on the right. If you look at the actions, you do not see the action up here. You see everything else though. You see compose second number, compose first number, you see the trigger, but you don't see the dynamic content for the action directly above it. This is an inconsistency because if I move down into my flow here a little further and I add an action after another card, and this is a template flow I'm working on that will show up in the template gallery soon. Um, now I do see the poster on adaptive card as a channel, but this one is not a weight. And so I believe this problem may be constrained to the new weight actions. I can't be sure. Irrelevant, I'm going to show you how to work around it. So if you are trying to use the outputs of your weight action, here's the first thing you need to know. Whether or not you see the dynamic content, there are outputs. So I'm gonna open up this weight action and you'll see that in here, I do have an output body. I have response time. I have all the details about the responder. I have the submit action ID, uh, which is the action assigned to the submit button. And then I have the data. And the data will always include all of the IDs relating to inputs. So when they when they input things, whether they use an input box or a choice um, radio button or a checklist or whatever way they answer, you can add ID properties in the message that you can remember and use. And with adaptive cards, I always use AC as a prefix to my outputs. And it's just, I know for a fact, if I start typing AC for the most part, all of my output values will come up there. That's my, my little um, method. Now, normally you should see in the dynamic content that comes from this card, 
you should see a C answer if you use that in your properties. In our case, we don't see it, so what do we do? All right, so I'm gonna go back to edit, and I'm going to uh, go to add a compose right here, and I'll show you how I can get that answer by um, leveraging what I just learned from the JSON body. So I'm gonna click over here and over here in expression, and I'm just gonna paste a formula over here that I'm also gonna uh, show you in OneNote here. And basically, every action has a set of outputs, right? So whenever you, you, you choose outputs and then the name of an action above, you automatically get the whole body of that thing. Um, let's just do that first. So I'm gonna delete everything after that. Sorry, I'm just gonna put the outputs so you can do this for anything at all, all right? So I'm gonna do outputs, uh, card weight action, right? And so now that will automatically by default, let's just make sure I spelled it right. Um, okay, let's hit this. Let's see, it looks like, oh, you need to have the the uh, name of the action. And I I did rename this to make this a little bit easier. So that was my cheat to prepare for this video is I um, renamed this because if I didn't rename it, it would, first of all, it'd be very long. But second of all, every space would have to be replaced with an underscore here. And so since I didn't want to deal with all that, I just renamed it to something short that has no space, right? So now if I click OK here, I'm going to actually turn this rest of this off by making it only run if this flow has timed out. Okay, so the rest of this won't run. We'll just run up to that compose and I'll just run it um, from the last data. And the reason is, is I don't wanna have to answer the prompts. This particular flow has uh, some prompts in it. Again, it's a template I'm working on and I'll be sharing with you soon this. It's, I'll, I'm doing a bunch of interesting tutorial templates uh, that you can use to learn things from. Um, but now you see it's posted the, the card. So if we go to Teams, so I'm just going to open Teams in a new tab and uh, log in as the same person and then use the web. Okay, so now there is actually a sales and marketing, I believe, in here. Let's find it. I think I logged into the wrong Megan. Let's double check. Yet, yeah, when I log into Teams, again, I have to check that I'm logging into the right place. Yeah, it looks right. Okay, so let's see. My Teams, what's new here? Let's see. Bot fun. Nope. Hidden Teams. Okay, I think it's this one. Um, yeah, I think it is this one. Again, this is something I'm working on that's not finished yet, so don't look too hard at it. But I'm gonna go ahead and um, just finish the run. Okay, so now I, I did the finishing of the run, and now if you open up Compose here, you'll see the whole body. And, and this, in, this is, actually it's more than the body. It's the body plus the headers, okay? So basically, it's it, it, by doing that, outputs and then the name, I'm getting everything possible from that action. So basically, it's a way of seeing what does that action give me back, right? And so in this case, I'm still focusing on the fact that I need this data, but now it's easy for me to drill down into the data. So if I add another compose here, and I'm just using compose because this isn't going to be variable, like it's, it's only gonna be a static thing. So this first compose is like, give me everything. It's kind of a way to look at what are the outputs of a particular action. It's handy in many cases. But this one, give me what they said. Give me their answer. So what answer did they put in there? So all I'm gonna do is kind of drill into that, and that was what we pasted before, looking at this up close, 
It's the outputs that we just did, which gives us everything. But then we're going to drill down into that. So we start with the body. And then we don't need the user information. So we don't need that section. But we do need everything in data. Everything in data will give you all your outputs, right? And because we don't see the dynamic content, we have to use the JSON to tell us what's the name of this thing. Also, my tip to you is to name your outputs. That way you don't even need the JSON. You know what you called your things, right? Put it in the comment of the action if you need to. But, but I do keep track of what my outputs are called. And so now because I've drilled all the way down to the output, this will just tell me how they responded to the card. So let's go back here and hit OK. And now if we test this, I'm going to use the same data. That way we don't have to go and answer the, I believe we won't have to answer the card again. Let's see what happens here. La la la. Oh, nope, it's waiting. Okay, so let's go back. Let's answer the card again. And then we'll go back. And this should finish. Yep, there it goes. So this one has everything. Whereas this one here only has their answer. What did they input? Now, if I had three inputs, I would be able to use any one of them in that same format, changing the last piece of it every time. So every time I need a different one, maybe I have AC answer, maybe they selected from a group, but just make sure your IDs are named and you can refer to them in this way. The only thing you need to change is what's at the end. Now, um, important note here is how you do this in your in your in your uh, JSON. Uh, whether you are in experimental or not, you look at your JSON. You will notice that there are a left side, which is like the key, and a right side, which is the value. In everything, you have some keys and some values. But when it comes to inputs, right, um, whenever you see that you used an input, and so you used one of these things over here, my recommendation is that you always add this ID. If it's not there automatically, you need to add it and give it a name. And I'll show you how you add it. You don't have to, um, you don't have to do any, uh, what do I say? How do I say this? You don't have to do any JSON formatting. When you click on that input field that you added, whether you add it from Adaptive Cards I.O. or whether you add it from where we are right now inside Flow, you just go over to the right here and you'll notice in the element properties you have an ID. Always give your inputs an ID. I always precede them with AC as well. And all it does is tell me this is an ad adaptive card output. I just, it's very important for me when it comes to consistency uh, to do the same thing every in every case, kind of becomes a habit that way. So I prefix all my outputs for adaptive cards with AC, and then I give them an answer that, that applies to whatever's going on. In this case, I was very generic. I just used answer. But because I use this ID in the, design, whether I was doing it from um, the design studio, like let's say if I was an adaptive cards.io designer and I was building my card here, um, any inputs, let's do something with an input. Uh, sorry, I missed, I missed it. Inputs, okay. Any input, I want to click on that input, and I want to make sure I give it an ID. And it might be an, uh, whatever ID I want. So in this case, I might do AC name. In this case, I might do AC homepage, okay? And these IDs will go with me when I copy this JSON and bring it into Flow, okay? And if I'm editing in Flow, then automatically these IDs would be saved with the card, okay? And those um, are therefore available to me when I want to drill down and get to them in dynamic content. Okay, so something to think about. Now I'm just going to save for a minute. If you are using the experimental features, um, you will also see the difference in the designer, okay, uh, in the collection of adaptive cards. 
And now I'm going to change to experimental. Very often what happens is I, I sometimes, uh, nope, we're all good. So when you're using the designer, you have to do this using the FX button. And basically you'll press, you'll put that same formula. There's no difference. That same formula goes in there and that's how you will get that function. Sorry. It jumps a little bit because that's still experimental as well. Um, into here and so that's the way you would do it if you were using the new designer um, also if you were using the new designer and again notice if i collapse all of these again this shows that we are not getting dynamic content from the action above us which is unusual and we are working to resolve um, but if that happens now you have a second way of getting that value and your second way of getting that value is to use this formula right here, outputs name of the action, um, body.data, which all of that should be consistent across all weight actions. So outputs name of weight action dot body dot data. And then this last part here is whatever the ID is on the output. And that's up to you to decide what the ID is on the output okay so whether you're using the new dynamic content editor or you're using the old one you can add this as an advanced function okay uh, even if you don't see the dynamic content now if you do see the dynamic content then you don't have to worry about any advanced functions just click on the <clears throat> content item that you want and move on from there okay um Keep in mind that if you're waiting, you need to use the wait action. Otherwise, you won't get enough dynamic content, okay? Um, all right, then. I just wanted to share that with you as a workaround. Uh, maybe it also taught you something that you can use in another scenario altogether. Um, wishing you the best. Let me know if there's anything that's bothering you. I appreciate you posting on Twitter when you run into problems like this. I don't always catch it first day, but... Um, DM me if you notice I'm not noticing and I will get on top of it. All right. Thank you all. And I want to thank Stephen Collier and Tomas for bringing this out on Twitter. Thank you so much.